Hello, I'm David Kennedy and welcome back to World Talks. To Greece now and the elections on Sunday the 21st of May show no outright winners. The sitting Prime Minister's party, the uh, centre-right New Democracy, has claimed victory. Uh, having achieved over 40% of the vote. Uh, we now expect a new round of voting uh, in late June or early July in the new two-round system. Now, to discuss the state of play, I'm joined by Ioannis Grigoriadis, uh, who is Associate Professor at Bilkent University. Hello, Hello. good morning. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, um, what is the mood among voters this morning seeing this uh, result? Um, first of all, um, it was a 59% uh, turnout. Um, was that uh, less than expected? I believe there was rain uh, yesterday, terrible rain in, in Greece. It is true that the turnout was not uh, a very big one, but uh, over the last decade, and also due to the Greek economic crisis, uh, turnout uh, levels have been particularly low. So I don't think that this played a big role in the final outcome of the elections. What is really surprising, though, is the margin between uh, the first and the second party, because many had anticipated that after four years, in power and with the pandemic and political crisis with Turkey and lots of difficult issues to address, Mitsotakis would have uh, lost some of his appeal to the Greek public. In contrast to these conditions, Mitsotakis managed to improve his position while the chief opposition party lost considerable amount of votes. So this Mitsotakis appears to be as a clear winner uh, out of the yesterday's election. OK, now, what is the next step? Um, he hasn't got an absolute majority and um, he's quite bullish this morning, saying he doesn't want a coalition. Um, he wants uh, to get an outright uh, rule of the parliament and uh, presumably that means now going to a second round. Is that, is that how it works? There's a new system this time round. Well, according to the Greek constitution, the electoral law can change for the election after the next one, unless there is a qualified majority in the parliament, in which case the election law can change for the very, very next election. In the case of Greece, uh, the Syriza government uh, in 2018 introduced an electoral law that uh, offered a fully proportional representation system, which applied yesterday, in which case a party needed 51% uh, practically, or very close to 50% in some cases, to get the absolute majority. So there was zero chance that we have a single party government. Given the level of relations between the parties in Greece, it was clear that neither Mitsotakis nor the junior parties, like the chief opposition or the even smaller parties, were appearing interested in a coalition government. So the big question mark would be how high the percentage of Mitsotakis would be and how big the margin between the first and the second political party. But if you consider that some opinion surveys were projecting that Mitsotakis would get up to 35 percent and Syriza would be around 26 to 28 percent, you see now that there's a big surprise because of this huge margin between the first and the second party. And because now, in the next elections, you will have a system where the, the first party will get a bonus of seats, it appears very easy for Mitsotakis. Uh, if he repeats this performance, or even he goes slightly worse than yesterday, uh, it will be easier for him to get a comfortable majority in the parliament because of the new electoral the, law. Which uh, the, the new electoral law actually gives an extra 50 seats to the winners. Yes, yes. So this will make him uh, very strong and he may even introduce discussions about amending the constitution 
So opening a new set of political issues that will uh, consolidate his political hegemony in Greece. What is also very interesting is to see what's going to happen in the Syriza, in the second party, which suffered this big defeat, because uh, if there is election happening within the next month or so, it will be too quick to change leadership or to have any comprehensive discussion about what went wrong and how the party can improve its position. But then we have the third political party, PASOK, Kinal, that used to be the leading party in On the, the left, center left mm -hmm. of Greek politics until the Greek crisis erupted, in which case Syriza took its position. Now we may witness a, a new shift of roles with PASOK uh, being on the up, like uprising, and trying to challenge the position of Syriza as the leading party in the Greek center left. So that will be a very interesting thing to watch in the next parliamentary elections in Greece, whether the margin between Syriza and PASOK uh, shrinks even more. Right, indeed, uh, that, the, the, that is fascinating. Um, what I want to do is uh, go back uh, to Nia Demokratia um, and uh, Mitsotakis's speech uh, after finding out what the results were. Just let's uh, have a look at this and we can comment on it afterwards. I am proud, I am also touched, as I feel the heavy responsibility that has been placed on my shoulders by such an impressive percentage. I pledge that I will work even harder in order to honor your trust. The dynamic of the result is more than clear. Citizens want a strong government, with a horizon of a four-year term, with bolder changes, so that we can cover the lost ground that separates us from Europe even faster. Uh, so wanting to uh, have that uh, absolute majority. Um, the younger voters who had uh, come out in demonstrations against the government after the tragic train crash that took place earlier this year, they didn't come out in, this, in the kind of numbers expected in order to change this vote, did they? Well, that was a big concern on the government side uh, to see how this tragic uh, accident that uh, shed light on some weaknesses of the Greek state and the sort of the whole state of affairs when it comes to the Greek railway system and the failure to adapt to uh, European standards. And uh, uh, of course, there was the big shock by the extent of human loss in that event. So. Shortly after the accident, there was some uh, sharp decrease in the popularity rates of the government, and there were some uh, demonstrations, particularly by young uh, Greeks. But it turns out that the effect of this uh, uh, tragic accident evaporated, so it didn't reach to the ballot box. Other issues prevailed, uh, and I would uh, consider that particularly uh, concerns about the future of the Greek economy and whether uh, Syriza and the opposition parties have a realistic uh, plan on how to make Greek economy stand on its feet and recover from all these difficult years of economic crisis. This became the strongest uh, card in the hands of the, of the government party. So the accident, the real accident effect appears to be insignificant in the end. Now, looking to the uh, Greek economy, of course, there's been um, a dramatic uh, growth period in Greece, some 6% growth in uh, the gross national product. Um, but uh, when you look at opinion polls about whether um, everyday uh, people in Greece feel better off. Many of them are complaining about uh, the, the cost of living, um, about even although there's been massive improvements in terms of unemployment, that there's still serious issues there uh, that uh, the government, whichever one actually prevails, will have to deal with. I agree that the effect of the recent uh, economic growth remains lopsided. In a sense, there are certain regions of the country and there are certain sectors of the economy that benefit a lot. So uh, the part of Greece 
that uh, has a strong, vibrant tourist economy appears to be doing much better compared to the rest of the country. So that's why you may see that uh, there are certain parts of the country, certain segments of the population that don't have access to this sector that appear to be having significant problems. And of course, that's where the government should put its effort in order to produce a more equitable and more sort of harmonious uh, growth that uh, involves all the citizens of the country. This is something that this government has been doing. So there have been a lot of efforts to provide uh, social sort of benefits or subsidies during the pandemic or uh, as a result of the war in Ukraine. For example, electricity was subsidized for poor segments of the society. So it was there, but apparently more has to be done. And the more equitable uh, economic growth model has to be uh, developed and implemented that embraces the whole of the country, not just the parts of the country where tourism is booming. Well, exactly. And um, as, as you mentioned, Syriza, they were the kind of the, the populist party uh, that were going to sort all of that. Um, very kind of uh, uh, dynamic leadership, so, so one thought. Uh, but, uh, but that hasn't actually, um, you know, done them many favours uh, electorally. Um, so if you look at uh, Greece now, we've got a situation where at the same time we've got both Greece and Turkey uh, looking forward to the second rounds of elections. Um, what are you hoping for um, once we get this summer of uh, political wrangling over? Well, there was big concern a few months ago about how destabilizing the election campaigns in both countries would be for the bilateral relations because of the fact that relations have been very difficult in the last few years. Fortunately, things proved to be calmer. Many argued that the effect of the earthquakes in Turkey, uh, the terrible earthquakes in early February, in which Greek public opinion, the Greek government responded in a very strong uh, sort of uh, manner, showing solidarity and trying to relieve Turkey from this burden uh, of this disaster. Uh, this uh, uh, put the relationship into a better level. And we haven't had any negative incidents in the last couple of uh, months. Uh, it is difficult to see how uh, the future will be on this level. And I Consider, I consider that Turkey is uh, the focal point in that respect because of the fact that the state of Turkey's economy, the state of Turkey's relations with the West, the state of uh, Turkey's uh, willingness to sort of take a strong position within NATO, like let allow Sweden to join NATO. These are very big issues that will define Turkish foreign policy in the near term. And I do consider Greek-Turkish relations as a part of this greater equation. So if Turkey wants better relations with the West, if Turkey needs economic aid by Western international organizations, then there is a chance that Greek-Turkish relations are going to be stable. We may have detente, so things were not going to go worse. We may not have conflict resolution, but we can have some stability on this. If Turkish relations with the West are going to be more difficult, more unpredictable, this unpredictability may again affect Greek-Turkish relations. But I hope that things will not move towards that direction. Right. So moving towards greater stability. Um, meanwhile, we'll be taking a closer look at that over the next couple of weeks. But meanwhile, uh, Ioannis uh, Grigoriadis, Associate Professor at Bielkent University, thank you very much for joining me. Most welcome. Thank you. That's it for World Talks, but uh, stay with us. We've got more coming up for you on TVP World. <laughs>